Nice to be with you, Lendl. Now to today's panel. Joining me is the new Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister for Agriculture, Richard Colbeck, and in Sydney, Green Senator Lee Rhiannon. Welcome to you both. Thanks. Hello, Lindell. Hello, Richard. Thanks, Lindell. Good day, Lee. As well as public service changes, there are a number of other things on the to-do list today. A full ministry meeting followed by a cabinet meeting. On the government's to-do list, Mr Abbott to instruct his department to draw up legislation to repeal the carbon tax. Joe Hockey to send a letter to the Clean Energy Finance Corporation to begin work on winding that agency up. And Scott Morrison as Immigration Minister to instruct his department to reintroduce temporary protection visas. And as I mentioned earlier today on ABC News 24, a former senior advisor to John Howard, Tony Nutt, is back to help with the transition to government. Mr Abbott set the tone for the government this morning. We are determined to honour our commitments to scrap the carbon tax to stop the boats, to get the budget under control and to build the roads of the 21st century. We will be a problem-solving government based on values, not ideology. We hope to be judged by what we have done rather than by what we have said we would do. We are conscious of the ideals of duty and service exemplified by our Queen whom you have so graciously represented here in Australia, and we will not spare ourselves. We will not spare ourselves in order to deserve the trust placed in us this day. Uh, Richard, first to you. You have a new role. Congratulations. Do you know exactly what you'll be doing? Thank you. Uh, well, look, I've still got to finalise the details of that with Barnaby. We've had uh, a couple of conversations so far around responsibilities within the portfolio, but largely I'll be looking after the responsibilities I had in uh, opposition, I think, uh, fisheries and forestry, but there's a few other things that I want to have a chat to Barnaby about in relation to the broader portfolio. Uh, Lee, Mr Abbott was talking this morning at the swearing-in ceremony about the, the government keeping, his, keeping its promises. Now, you're not going to help him do all of that, are you? Well, we've clearly been elected on our platform and that's what we will, we will work hard. But uh, going back to some of the comments that we heard from the new Prime Minister today, we're already seeing the hypocrisy and I'd even say dishonesty when you look at what they have done to the overseas aid program. Like it's just the AusAid has disappeared overnight. We were never told that before the election. Uh, this is enormous betrayal of Australian people. Like Newspoll did a, a, did a poll of of Australian people and found 85 per cent uh, really do support overseas aid. But, but the overseas aid program isn't ending, it's just, it's just being subsumed into the Department of Foreign Affairs and it's always sat un under that umbrella, hasn't it? Yes, but it's had for more than 20 years, it's had a, um, its own department and that's been very important because that separation sends a clear message, particularly in the Pacific Asia region, in our neighbourhood, that we have a commitment beyond our own national interest, beyond the commercial interests of our, of our country. And now with this effective takeover by pushing it into DFAT, we've got a terrible situation. And it was set out by the new Foreign Affairs Minister, Julie Bishop, when she said the diplomats, she said this recently, Australian diplomats need to recognise that how much of their work is about commercial interests. Mm -hmm. Now, that, uh, like, to wipe out you know, the poverty alleviation uh, primary aspect of our aid program, which seriously does happen once it's just disappeared into DFAT, is sending the wrong message to our region. Uh, well, there were another of other changes to departments. Indigenous Affairs is moving into the Prime Minister's department. Tourism is being split between foreign affairs and industry, international and domestic tourism. Industry has responsibility for science. Customs moves into immigration. Richard, will it take some time for some clarity around some of these issues for concerns like Lee's to be addressed, that, that things aren't, may not be disappearing entirely? Well, I think this is a little bit of typical Greens alarmism, I have to say. I mean, uh, we have no smaller commitment uh, to any of the issues 
that are part of these portfolios, but Tony has made a very deliberate decision uh, as Prime Minister to simplify the structures of the Parliament uh, and the way that the public service works, and I think that's appropriate, actually. We had uh, titles that were too big to fit on both sides of a business card for some of the ministers previously, so we have a very simple structure. It doesn't demean at all uh, our importance, the importance that we place on any of these issues, uh, and uh, it's happening across portfolios. It will take a little while for it to settle down, but that's part of the usual machinery of government changes that occur after election, uh, and uh, it, it won't see any diminution of our focus or uh, importance that we place on, on any of those issues. Uh, Lee, there was some concern expressed when the ministry was announced and the titles were, as Tony Abbott said, deflated, that things like science wouldn't have a place. But it's clear from the administrative orders listed today that science will sit with the industry department while higher education sits with... Uh, sits within the education department. Do you think that, that as you read through those lists you'll see that, that things do have a home? Well, the government might say they have a home, but that doesn't mean anything will happen. And you've just given the example of higher education being within education. And what we heard from Mr Pine today, reported in one of the papers, is that, uh, well, they, they, he will be concentrating on schools because the work around higher education has all been done, which actually is a real criticism of the la former Labor government because they did cut that $2.3 billion from our university budget. The coalition supported them and here we have the coalition saying well our work's done it was done by Labor and that's not where our priorities will be whereas like if we're going to be a skilled innovative nation which we heard time and time again from both uh, our new Prime Minister and the former Prime Minister you need to have a well-funded well-resourced higher education sector both TAFE and our universities need more money. Uh, we might move on now to reaction to the decision to uh, acts immediately three public service chiefs. Uh, the former Treasurer Wayne Swan says Martin Parkinson, the Secretary of the Treasury, who will be moving on middle, in mid next year, will be a loss to the Treasury. And one of the candidates for the Labor leadership, Anthony Albanese, says the coalition is treating the public service like a political plaything. When I was uh, the incoming uh, minister, uh, there was no departmental secretaries sacked. Public servants do their job professionally. Now, these jobs should not be political playthings. These jobs are important. We have professional public servants. They should be respected. Richard, was it not a night of the long knives, but a day of the long knives? And, and did Mr Abbott get rid of public service chiefs who have a connection to the Labor Party or who have disagreed with the coalition in the past? Well that's not how I saw it and it's not unusual that there might be some changes to departmental heads. It's happened in the past. I think it's a little bit disingenuous of uh, uh, Mr Albanese to claim that uh, they didn't participate in that process because I know that they did on occasions while they were in government. Uh, as the Prime Minister has said, we're moving through a process quite deliberately. We're setting up the government and the agencies in the way that we see that we want them to be set up. Uh, and uh, this is part of that process. Uh, it's not about a night or day of, of anything, really. It's about us establishing uh, our agencies in the way that we want to, them to move uh, as into, into government. Uh, and uh, this is not an unusual aspect of that process. Do you know if this will be the extent of the changes to the public service? Well, I would imagine those that have been announced uh, today are what's to be announced. Um, and you'll see movement as governments move on, as we saw under the last government. I mean, uh, there were agency head changes during the period of the last government as circumstances arose. Um, sometimes, because of unfortunate circumstances, I think the head of the Department of Environment might have uh, paid a price for Kevin Rudd's penchant for spending money on pink bats. Um, for example. Lee, it is, it is within uh, the government's right to be able to change particularly public service chiefs as they see fit and, and to change uh, departmental roles. Uh, for example, the, the, the coalition has merged the uh, industry and resources and energy departments. Previously they had been separate. 
Look, as you say, certainly governments can do uh, that. That's what they come in and they've got the power to do that. It doesn't mean that it's the right thing in terms of good outcomes for the country. I understand that as well as the three positions that you've just named, that there's others that have gone because of various um, sections being um, taken over. One example again being AusAid. Mr Peter Baxter, the head of AusAid, done a fantastic job. Uh, he now does not have that job as the head of AusAid because of it being taken over by DFAT. But I think you're, what you're also raising needs to remind us that there's 12,000 public sector workers, many of them in Canberra, who obviously would be very worried about their future because their jobs were already on the line uh, bef before the election because of some of the announcements from the government and you could imagine that they would be very worried about their future with the way this um, the coalition are conducting themselves and that again can't bring good outcomes in terms of delivery of public services, protection of the environment. All this talk you'll hear about green tape and red tape, that's just the coalition running their line to remove regulation standards that give protection that is absolutely vital in this day and age. Uh, well, Richard, uh, the coalition, you, your government has come in committed to reducing the size of the public service by 12,000 jobs. Not all public servants live in Canberra. As a, as a senator from Tasmania, would you like to see public service jobs in the regions, in places other than Canberra, protected? Well, I don't see why a public servant would be looking over their shoulder when uh, our reductions are going to come from natural attrition. Uh, that's not sacking people, that's people making their own decisions uh, and, and us modifying the size and the scale of the public service based around that process. So again, uh, more alarmism from the Greens uh, trying to frighten people off. We're going to reduce the numbers in the public service but by natural attrition. That's not us sacking people, that's people making their own decisions. Uh, and that will happen across the country. Uh, but I think the large focus of it will be here locally. That's where the bulk of the public servants are. Um, and uh, the, the fruits of that will be borne out as that process is undertaken. Because there are also, in, in your promises, particularly in your plan for Tasmania, some bureaucracies to set up, uh, I think, a one-stop shop in Tasmania for, for development approvals. There's also going to be one-stop shops for environmental approvals as well, although some, some of that might sit with the states. Well, look, I think this is a really important part of what we promised Australians. We promised to reduce the red and green tape. Uh, and, and I know from personal and practical experience at home in Tasmania that the reason that the Greens want that red and green tape is so that they can put obstacles in the way of development and projects. Now, our objective is to reduce that so businesses can understand as quickly as possible where they sit with their development approvals. Uh, we're not talking about reducing environmental uh, controls at all. We're looking about a process that lets industry understand as quickly as possible uh, where they sit because we know that time is money uh, and it's important that industry understand quickly so that they can make their decisions about an investment and that's part of p making uh, Tasmania in particular because we're really struggling from uh, a terrible Labor Greens government down there at the moment but the country more broadly open for business. Uh, Lee, it is not clear how many of these changes will need to be put before the Parliament. Will there be some things that that might either not have to go before the parliament or, or not be legislation but be disallowable. Oh yes, well when you're referring to disallowable there you're talking about regulations which is a part of the legislative process and uh, we can disallow and try and stop them going through so if the Greens judge that that was bad policy we would certainly do that. Going back to some of Richard's comments, like he's all day one in the job and he's already engaging in that double speak and he on the one hand is saying like people won't lose, public sector workers won't lose their jobs, like natural attrition is the talk these days but the conditions are created where people are effectively pushed out of their job and when you're talking about getting rid of green tape and red tape uh, that's about delivering for the Liberal and the Nationals constituency the big end of town because those standards are there so we can get the balance right and we've seen that recently in the with the New South Wales government the Barry O'Farrell government came in to office with a clear mm. promise around coal seam gas that they would work with the community Community, so this wasn't and damaging their land and, and now they have just not honoured that promise they're actually opening it up to industry and that's why we'll have to leave it Lee Rhiannon and Richard Colbeck thank you very much for joining us today thank you thanks Linda
And that's Capitol Hill. We will be back at the same time tomorrow. Until then, good night.